Welcome to Japanese Classroom. This lesson is about the particles you need to know at the beginner's level in Japanese. There are a lot more particles than shown here, and most of them have more than one meaning or usage, so I cannot cover all of them here, but these are the must-know at the beginner's level. I will divide them into seven groups and explain group by group. But before we start, we'd better revise what particles do. Particles are short words which connect a word or phrase to another part of the sentence. They are similar to prepositions in English. Prepositions in English are called prepositions because they are placed in front of a noun and connect that noun to the rest of the sentence, like I went to a cafe, I arrived at the cafe at 3 p.m., I had a coffee in the cafe. And as you can see, even though the noun prepositions are connecting, is all cafe, but Three different prepositions are used here. And the middle sentence has at twice. One is for the cafe allocation and the other for 3 p.m., which is a time phrase. So prepositions are decided by the noun it is leading and its relationship to the rest of the sentence. Japanese particles are used after the word we want to connect to the sentence, but the rest is almost the same as English prepositions. Which one to use is decided by the word we are connecting and how it is connected to the rest of the sentence. Before I go any further, I have to confess this to you. Choosing the correct prepositions in English is still very hard for me. I still make heaps of mistakes. But when I make a mistake, for instance, if I say I had the coffee on the cafe, native English speakers can correct me, but often they can't tell me why. They usually say it doesn't sound right. And I think it is the key about learning prepositions or particles. We need to hear them thousands of times until our ears can remember the correct ones. When I started to learn English, I never thought that they will come when my ears can tell if it's right or wrong. But I'm getting there, so one day you will be able to use most particles confidently and correctly. So don't be impatient. Keep going. Okay. Let's start. These are the seven groups. As you can see, some are doubling up in more than one group. That is because one particle can have multiple meanings and usages. Okay, the first group is wa, ga, o, and ni. These are the particles that show the position of the word in the English sentence. The first sentence is Watashi wa nihongo o which means I teach Japanese. The word I is the topic of the sentence, teach is the verb, and Japanese is the object of the verb. So for watashi, we use the topic marker wa, and for nihongo, the object marker o. Watashi wa nihongo o In English, the order of the words shows the function of each part, so we cannot change the order around. Japanese teach I doesn't make any sense. But in Japanese, we can swap them around. Nihongo watashi wa oshiemasu also means I teach Japanese. So we need particles like wa, ga, o, ni to mark the function of each part within the sentence. Now, I said we can change the order around, but we do need to keep the verb and verb equivalent at the end of the sentence. 
And while these two Japanese sentences both mean I teach Japanese, the emphasis is different. The first one is more like I teach Japanese, and the second one is more like I teach Japanese. The next sentence is Watashi wa YouTuber ni narimashita. I became a YouTuber. I wasn't a YouTuber before, but now I am. So the YouTuber is the result of my change. And for that, we use the particle ni. This particle ni is inevitably used with a verb that indicates change. Naru, narimas is the typical one of them. By the way, YouTuber is not an object in English either, so you cannot use o for that one. Now, some of you might be wondering why I call the word I or watashi the topic, not the subject. In English, the word I here would be called a subject. However, the concept of the English subject is slightly different from what is indicated as a topic by the topic marker wa in Japanese. That is, a topic stated by the particle wa stays as the topic for multiple sentences until a new topic is introduced using another wa. So in these two sentences, I don't actually need to repeat watashi wa in the second sentence because we know we are talking about watashi until a new topic appears. So while watashi is still the topic, if I introduce a new sentence, musuko ga imasu, whose literal meaning is a son exists. It actually means that a son exists for me, or more like, I have a son. Here, the verb is imas exists, and musuko, a son, is the subject of the verb imas, and for that, we use the subject marker ga. Now, I don't want to venture into talking about differences between wa and ga here, so let's have a look at ga from a different angle. I usually tell beginners to remember the occasions when ga is preferred over wa, and here are the occasions. When we talk about our family and pets, like I have a son or we have a cat, in English, we usually start the sentence with the owner and use the verb have. But in Japanese, ga is expressed with the verb iru, imasu, which means to exist. Then we use the subject marker ga and say musuko ga iru and neko ga iru. Here, the focus is still in the implied topic, in these cases I or we, not the subject, musuko or neko. The next sentence is similar. Isu no shita ni neko ga iru, which means there is a cat under the chair. When the sentence starts with isu, the focus is on isu, the chair, not on the cat. So for neko, we use the subject marker ga. So in short, when we use the verb iru, imasu, for the English sentences starting with I have, we have, somebody has, and when we want to say there is or there are, we use the subject marker ga to mark the subject of the sentence. Or more accurately speaking, the subject of the verb immediately after ga. If I summarize it here, I can say ga is used with iru or imasu when the focus is not on the subject. There are some other occasions when ga is preferred over wa. The next is when we talk about likes and dislikes or the target of desire. 
My son likes p e a is 息子は梨が好きだ。I want to eat a p e a is 私は梨が食べたい。So, が is used when we use words like 好き、大好き、嫌い、大嫌い、or something したい、or 欲しい。The very last one for now is when we talk about ability or skills. My son is good at soccer is 息子はサッカーがうまい。So, が is used when adjectives like うまい、上手、下手、苦手。And verbs like できる or any verbs which has the meaning of can already. Okay, let's move on to the next group. That is to, ya, ka, no. The characteristics of this group is that they can connect two nouns only and that the connected phrase becomes another element of a sentence. And that is the reason why I put the blue square brackets around the phrases before o taberu. The content of the blue brackets are the object of the verb taberu here. Let's have a look at the differences. The first one, to, is an exhaustive end. So, banana to keiki o taberu means I eat a banana and a cake, but nothing else. The next, ya, is a non-exhaustive end, which gives examples. So, banana ya keiki o taberu means I eat a banana And a cake and something else. The third one, ka, is the English o. So, banana ka keiki o taberu means I eat either a banana or a cake, but not both and nothing else. The last no is very different from the rest. No can show the attribute of the second noun. So, here, A banana is the attribute of the cake. So, a cake made of a banana or a banana cake. As no has a few more functions, I will make a new slide. The top one is the one we have just had a look at. Banana no keiki o taberu means I eat a banana cake. The second no is used to show the ownership. So, 息子のケーキを食べる means I eat my son's cake. The last example here is to show the base of location. 猫は机の下にいる means the cat is under the desk. 机 is the base or the reference point and 机の下 means under the desk. I have a separate video Explaining how to describe locations. So if you are interested, please watch that video. The link should be showing at the top right corner right now. The next set is for locations. The first of that is de to show the place of action. Umi de oyogu means I swim in the sea. There are two needs. In this category, the first is to show the place of existence. Umi ni sakana ga iru means there are fish in the sea. And the second ni is to show the destination. Umi ni iku means I go to the sea. Having said that, the Japanese word umi is used like the English word beach. So umi ni iku actually means I go to the beach. The next one is e. It's written as he, but pronounced without an h sound. e indicates the direction you are going. So, umi e iku means I go to the direction of the beach. But e is not common these days. Many people prefer to use ni, the destination marker, instead. The last two here. Make a pair, kara and made. 
Kara indicates the starting point and Made shows the end point. Umi kara kuru means it comes from the sea. And umi made aruku means I walk as far as to the beach. Some verbs like aruku do not take the destination marker ni. So sometimes made is used instead of ni. Now, many of my students often get confused among the first three. So let's have a quiz. Can you place the correct particle in each blank? The first one, Nihon, Iku, Japan, Go. So it must be the destination. Next one, Nihon, Tomodachi ga iru. Japan, friends exist. So it must be the place of existence. The last one, Nihon, Ramen o taberu. Japan, eat ramen noodles. So, place of action. I hope you got them all correct. Okay, the next group is to specify time. Usually, ni is used to specify the time. However, when we say something happened today, we don't usually say on today. And that is the same in Japanese as well. So for those words shown on the screen, yesterday, today, last week, this month, next year, we don't usually use ni. And this includes phrases like asa, the morning, hiru, during the day, yugata, in the evening, and yoru, at night. We don't usually use ni after these words to specify the time frame. Starting point and end point particles are the same as those for locations. Shichiji kara kuji made benkyou suru means I study from 7 till 9. The next set is miscellaneous particles. De has a few more functions. The first one here is for configuration. Hitori de suru means I do it alone. Kimono de iku means I go in kimono, wearing kimono. The next is for means. Fune de iku means I go on a boat. Any transport is marked with the particle de. And hashi de taberu means I eat with chopsticks. Tools like chopsticks are marked with the particle de. The third de here is for a reason or a cause. Shigoto de isogashi means I am busy with work. The last usage of de here is for ingredient or material. Kami de tsukuru means I make it with paper. The last one on this slide is the companion marker to. Haha to iku means I go with my mom. The second last group is sentence ending particles. Ka, ne, yo. Ka is a question mark. Ne is to ask for a confirmation. Yo is like an exclamation mark. If I start explaining the nuance differences, it will become too long. So I won't go any further. If you like, please pause the video and read all the examples. Okay. The very last particle for this video, it is mo, which means also. The tricky bit of mo is it replaces wa, ga, or o. So, kore wa oishii ne means this is delicious. If you want to continue saying that is also delicious, you say are mo oishii ne. Neko ga iru means there is a cat. And if you want to say, there is also a dog, then you say, inu mo iru. Banana o tabeta means, I ate a banana. And if you want to add, I ate a cake also, then, keiki mo tabeta. But if you want to add the meaning of also in a sentence which doesn't use wa, ga, or o, 
you need to add more after the particle which is already there. So for instance, そこに猫がいる means there is a cat there. If you want to continue, there is one over there too. Then you have to say, あそこにもいる。京都に行く means I'm going to Kyoto. And if you want to say, I'm going to Kobe also, then you say, Kobe にも行く。Okay, so now I explained all 16 basic particles. Let's recap the story. A basic sentence must have a verb or a verb equivalent. And it ends with or without a sentence ending particle. You can add various elements in front of the verb. I put topic wa at the top because that is most often used at the beginning of a sentence. And object o usually comes just in front of the verb. But the order is not really critical. And we can use any noun phrase inside any element. And if you want to add the meaning of also, you need to replace wa, ga, o with mo, or add mo after the particle which is already there. You can download this diagram from my website. The link to the website should be showing at the top right corner now. I have also compiled a self-marking quiz to practice particles covered in this video. Please visit the link page. The link should be showing at the top right corner. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you like this lesson, please subscribe to my channel and give a thumb up. For more useful information, please visit easyjapanese.com. また今度 !See you next time!